Uh, this is just a continuation of the last video uh, where I left off at Honolulu. Um, I just ran out of memory. You know, this little phone will only hold, what is it, three gigabytes? Something like that. Um, but I was talking about how you can means test the energy field that you occupy. And you can begin to sort of self-manage in a way, or what we call self-realization, of how the different speeds in which you're experiencing, based on the geometric space in which your state of consciousness is experiencing that particular geometric space. Okay? So, for example, if you go to Honolulu, go down by the Alamoana Shopping Center. Okay? Uh, and... And, and start noting the energies that you experience. Take a ride on a bus. Go walk through the mall. Walk on the beach. Uh, just begin to, to just sort of let yourself loose and being able to freely experience what your experiences are without sort of thinking about it necessarily. But, but you have in your memory, if you will, that you know at the end of the day, you're going to start logging down what it is that you experienced. Okay. Now, naturally, we can measure that on the electromagnetic spectrum and hook you up <clears throat> and to be able to measure in real time what you're experiencing in vectors, geospace vectors, okay, between past, present, and future, the different speeds of everything that you're experiencing by the different speeds that are being run by all the different units of consciousness that you become aware of that you have an interface with that are there in Honolulu, for example. Okay, that's why everybody has a record here. Okay, um, while they're here, um, and so if you if you jump on a bus, ride a skateboard, and this is where I left off. Okay, a helicopter, an airplane, teleport. Okay, jump on a little Jetson space scooter. Okay, and go say in the middle of the island. Okay, where there isn't anybody out there but just jungle crickets and everything that's vibrating off the chart out there, right? And then, and then um, begin noting what you remember experiencing and then start noticing what you're experiencing being out in the middle of a jungle where the nearest house or the nearest tower, you know, is a half a mile away, meaning that you don't have any interruption of any signals that are going to influence the speed at which you're experiencing because... You're not in any, even though there's the plasma field of artificial intelligence, you can at least note what you're experiencing being in density. Okay, because obviously you have in Honolulu, I forget how many millions of people, how many people actually live there in Honolulu because there's so many people that come in and out, particularly with cruise ships that are always coming in and out of Honolulu. Um, and then, of course, all the planes and the different times of years in which you're there or times during the year in which you're there are, are going to vary because you have people from all over the world that come to visit Honolulu. As a matter of fact, if you are into matter density programming <laughs> and you like to present yourself with a lot of ways in which other designer artists in the fashion industry um, put together different patterns and floral patterns or whatever colors that you want to present that you find attractive to your own state of consciousness that you want to present to others. The Alamo on a shopping center is one of the most, um, if you want to think of it, condensed because it's like three stories that, uh, that have an enormous, I don't think that I can remember, and I've been to a lot of malls across the United States, but I don't think I can remember a place that I've been to in, if you want to think of geometric space, where there were more retail outlets of just about everything you could find, right? In term, particularly in the area of fashion, right? Particularly with females and, and how Cosmopolitan Magazine and Seventeen were sort of uh, pushed in front of them through that industry that says, hey, look like this, look like that, look like this, look like that. So they were essentially telling us, hey, look at the fashion, look at the clothes, look at the girl that's wearing all this, which means she's presenting herself as a model. So if you want to look like she does, or if you want to wear the kinds of things that she does, then we can mimic what she does and wear what she does, 
and therefore they can make money off of that instead of you creating your own fabric, if you will, and coming up with your own particular creative design that is original to you as an original artist upon which you present your, yourself to the rest of the cosmos however you choose to do that creatively with your own imagination. See, and this is sort of how a lot of the programming sort of kicks in because even though I can have a great appreciation for the creative intelligence and imagination in another artist that wants to present what it is that they do and then I will choose to spend money or trade uh, for something that I use my energy to put together and then say, okay, I'll trade you a silk flowered shirt that's got buttons made out of coconut shells, which were the original Hawaiian shirts that were made out of silk, okay, that had a burgundy background and shoots of ban green bamboo and then the flowers, which represent nature. See, that's one thing. So I can have an appreciation for another artist and then trade for something that I have that I've acquired through nature and then trade it with them for something else that comes from nature, if you will. Okay, and this is we, we get into the whole gamut of things that are syn synthetically produced, things out of all the other synthetics that come from oil, etc., right? But for me, it's always going to come back to the fact that the girl on the planet provides everything for us for free. So therefore, when I know that, it's very difficult for me to turn around and say, well, I'm going to charge you for something that was given to me for free. But then again, I use my energy to acquire it. And because I did that, I guess I've got to trade for something else so that I get something back that has value and energy even though I realized the energy that was given to me was free energy, and thus what love is is free energy. I'm giving it to somebody else. So I'm naturally always in a state and wanting to gift everything. But the problem with that is, is that in this dimension, if I keep doing that, I'm not going to have anything that I need for myself to accommodate the avatar with. Unless I'm living in pure spirit and pure consciousness, living in nature, in which I don't have an interface with something else, in which trade or commerce is taking place, which means preferring not to trade at all, preferring not to engage in any kind of commerce, but instead being in perfect consciousness and alignment spiritually with everything that is in nature spiritually that is there, that I have an energetic relationship with this eternal living spirit that is in that light, which means I don't need anything from anybody else. Because you are the natural source from which it all comes to begin with. So when you are that and you know that, then you know that you already have everything that you need because you are the source from which it all comes. You're zero point. And that always became very difficult for me to have to venture out from having a relationship that I had with a girl on the planet that way and then venturing out from source to experience something that is different in density consciousness in that by leaving the peace, the harmony, and the balance that is in nature with my spirit, with her, and then venturing and having communication relationships that is lower in speed when I'm leaving nature. Now, if you can perceive it that way within your own soul and spirit, so to speak, then you can understand how some of us that are native to this realm, so to speak, have a very deep personal spiritual relationship with everything that is living in spirit in nature in this realm. Okay? Which is why I wrote something down because it just comes to me. And so this is, uh, I ask, naturally ask a lot of questions because that's how we learn. Even though when I ask a lot of questions, I know what the answer is because where do you think the answer comes from? You already have all the answers because the answers to every question exist where? Within the field. Within the field of all information in which it's contained because you cannot create or destroy energy. So that means that all the answers exist within the energy field of the cosmos. So if you're asking the questions, the answers will come. So I was going to ask everybody a question here. 
So I ask everybody on the planet this. You know why I love to hang out with a goddess? You got any idea why that is? Because I love to have a relationship with a bigger calculator. To be aware of the loss and gain of units of electrons being lost to vampiric consciousness. Who are by default running a slower speed data processor. Because they're running at a slower speed wave of processing more data. See, that's what it is. We're data processors, which are energy processors across the past, present, and future possibilities that exist simultaneously. That's why I mentioned to Robert David Steele when he said he was a, an intelligence operative working for the CIA, and I said, well, then you understand what it means to experience the data. So, just like I've mentioned before, when you embrace somebody with your energy field, Everything that represents what my energy field is, is data that is moving at a high rate of speed because the spin of the Merkaba upon which all that data that is filling up geometric holographic space is spinning at such a high rate of speed that all that data that I'm processing is now being processed through your energy field, which means I'm also processing all your data that exists within your energy field that is what? being held between memory and no memory. Now we can get down to what's called the screen resolution, the pixel rate, the rate, the speed at which the resolution of the holographic cosmos is being experienced holographically. So what is your holographic screen resolution when it comes to a frame rate or what you're experiencing in your mind? What is the frame rate resolution speed of your data processor in which you are holographically projecting that which represents your creative imagination? What is the speed of your Merkaba? So what we're talking about here is a slower speed wave of processing and time vectoring units of electrical potential that's not being used to fill up more geometric holographic space to move their higher density consciousness and spin of their Merkaba to get through all the stargates and experience all of Laniakea. So simply what it means is, is that I love to be with big calculators. The bigger the calculator, the better, right? Because now you're running the highest state of awareness because what you're aware of, if you want to crunch all the data, is a lot of data. That's why I mentioned one time about a conversation that I had with a girl. And we talked about, uh, and I mentioned the fact that it was, and she's a, a math person because she works in finance. She worked at one of the head offices down in San Francisco with Charles Schwab. But when she mentioned about what we used to call know-it-alls, so I mentioned her, I said, listen, it's impossible for anybody to know it all. As Patty once said one time, your head would explode which means we're accessing incrementally bits and bytes of data. So how much data can you be aware of that can be measured in the speed at which you're aware of it? Because it's sort of like when you write a story. When you sit down and write a story, it means that you're not operating in no memory because the speed at which you're experiencing who you are with your state of consciousness that is holographically projecting what it is you're experiencing in that movie screen, which is the bidirectional echo chamber of sound and light, when you are holographically projecting that at a high rate of speed with your state of consciousness and your Merkaba, and you're operating on no memory, then you're experiencing what you're creating and what you're imagining at the time in which you're doing it. Which means you're not making more than one copy. Now we get down to the 35 millimeter camera, and you open it up and you see a mirror that's in there. Now we're into the film roll, which is negative energy, and the shutter speed of the light that is coming in there that is being exposed a negative current. That's why it has to be exposed in a dark room. So you can see all the pixel resolution. That's why sometimes when I used to blow up pictures, because I used to love photography and making 
uh, taking video landscapes of what I call dreamscapes because I love to be in nature and take pictures of all the different ways in which all the different colors, which represent all the different frequencies of what's being experienced by everything that is in that picture that represents what? Consciousness. So when you open up one of the old analog cameras that are not digital, you'll see the mirror in the back. And then you can set the shutter speed along with the film speed. And I used to run a thousand speed film so I used to love to be able to slow things down to a dime, to show them how the different speeds work that are based on frame rates of what we're capturing in the light onto that dark film strip, right? So when you blew stuff up, depending on the, the, the film speed that you were using and the type of camera that you were using that was high-end, that had a high ISO standard, then it allowed you to blow a picture up Okay, to like, I used to blow them up to, what was it, 11 by 14, and sometimes bigger than that. The higher the speed, the greater the blow up, which means you can maintain the fill rate, or what's called the geometric space, is filled up with denser. In other words, you can't see the space. We used to call that grainy pictures using Kodak paper. Ooh, it looks grainy, which means that the resolution isn't tighter, more dense. See? So now we get into density, lighter density, and that's where we get into mass density, right? So this is one of the reasons why I mentioned before as a child, I wanted to give everything away, because everything away that represents what was extracted from the planet, which represents things that are now dead, if you will, it becomes heavier matter density, which means lower frequency matter density. I don't want any part of that. Because you already know how it was extracted, how it was produced, and the relationship that blood money represents. Seven seconds of darkness that represents the parasitic corporations that have produced it, that you don't want your consciousness to have a relationship with that because now your state of consciousness is choosing to have as an attachment that represents something that is lower in density than what we are. Okay? Right. Because you realize that the source from which those things come, which represent material form, represents something that is in lower frequency density consciousness we don't want to have a relationship with. So you can't get rid of it fast enough, which means you can't get rid of their money fast enough which means giving the electrons back, giving the electrons back, wanting to push more electrons into the field because we realize through our state of consciousness that these are electron harvesters. So you're wanting to increase the speed of your electrons to power the heart wheel and the spinning of your Merkaba by not wanting to have an interface with a parasite. It's parasiting off the light of the girl in the planet. That's particularly true for those of us that are native here. That's why Karen McDonald filed the documents that she did. And she has the sovereign power as a clan mother to do that. That's why the Indians honor the matriarch. Because every species has a first mother. So when you think about your mother and my mother, my mother gave me love. So I remember the first sound vibration came from the birth giver. So I know that when I need love to heal, I'm going to go to my spiritual mother, which is a girl in the planet. That's what it means to be with a bigger calculator. Think about everything that she has to calculate in order to keep everything running. It's in peace, harmony, and balance with nature. So you can understand why she decided to say, okay, that's it. That's a line in the sand. So this had everything to do with learning. What children did not learn on this planet. 
So naturally it starts in childhood, even though I acknowledge it starts way before that. So I guess I'm done for the day. But uh, I'll leave you all with another question. What's a gatekeeper? You think of being able to get through a stargate. What gets us through a stargate? And what's a gatekeeper? Anyway, I love you all. Have a great day. Uh, the light won this. They know that. Uh, but just like any child that uh, doesn't want to give up all of its material stuff because it loves self-indulgence and a perversion of nature, is it want to give up uh, what it thinks it can control because that's the nature of its problem. It has to control what it doesn't love, which is itself. So if it has no love for itself, then it doesn't have any love for nature. And that's why the nature of what it does is to kill off everything in nature. Which means it's seeking to kill off everything that is giving us free energy. That's the nature of the relationship that we have and why the separation is taking place between lower density consciousness and higher frequency density consciousness. Anyway, have a great day. I love you all.